in today's life, or life is, at least mine, is going faster and faster every day. So wake up in the morning, go to work, and then when I came back, uh, sometimes my wife say, you didn't call me in the entire day. You called me at 4 o'clock. It's just too late now. <laughs> For, and, every wife uh, has said that to you, every husband. Yeah, can, you, <laughs> can you give us some uh, tips to kind of stop and... Uh, Feel the spirit or feel those problems. Sure. A great question. And, and, and it's related actually to two or three of these others. This hectic world we live in. I kind of yearn. I, I, I'm not much of a farmer. I don't have any green thumb. My wife has the green thumb in our family. But I kind of yearn for the old days where you worked with the kids. Uh, where you were just uh, 20 yards away outside the door from your wife all day. And I think families could communicate and kind of watch each other and be with each other a lot more than we are now. A commuting life, a techno technological life, a high-strung, high-speed life that starts early and goes late. Yeah, these are, these are also interesting challenges of the last days. Uh, life in the 21st century. And the, the best thing I know how to do is probably exactly what your wife was reminding you to do. And that is that we can all just, just put out a few little reminders, a few little, a few little uh, triggers uh, in, our, in our planner. I, I remember having an egg timer, that I set an egg timer. Uh, and when it went off, that's when I was to call Sister Holland, until you kind of get the habit, or one of your children. Uh, and you don't forget birthdays and you don't forget anniversaries because you plan ahead and somebody writes them down or you hang it from a wall on a 4 by 6 card or do some mechanical things that help. Now, those, those, are, those are kind of incidentals. Those are, that's, that's kind of responding to your cute question about you forgot to call me. But the larger question, I think, is about priorities generally about how do you juggle all the things that we have to juggle in our lives. And by the way, spouses really do and are sympathetic with that. They know, she knows you're working. We have personal needs. Our own spiritual need is great. Too often, too often, I think we can rush off to be a great spouse, or I'm going to be this terrific parent, and we haven't done one earthly thing to strengthen ourselves, to fill our own tank. And so we dash off to be, you know, Mr. Wonderful, and we're on empty. So we've got some spiritual needs and some physical needs in our own lives. How do you stay healthy? How do you eat right? How do you get enough exercise? How do you sleep well enough? How do you get, make sure you get your spiritual time? And then in order that, you can bless her, and you can bless the children, and you can bless uh, you, you, the people in your ward assignment, and, and, and so on and so forth. We've got personal needs. We've got marital needs before the children come. Uh, we had a spouse before we had any children, and sometimes we forget that. Then you've got the children, and then you've got professions, and you've got the church, and you've got civic neighborliness, and you know helping with the community uh, uh, cleanup campaign, and on and on and on. Welcome to the 21st century. Uh, and, and so those are real. I think you're asking a very real question. And we'll just have to uh, work at that, pray about that. And some days it might be that you do the community cleanup. And other days you say, I can't because it's my son's soccer game. And above it all and through it all, you say, I'm going to make sure that my wife and I are doing this together and we're communicating together and we're in love. And we get to the temple uh, on whatever schedule it is we can establish. And it's kind of like spinning plates. It's, it's, it's kind of like a juggler at the carnival, but, but we can do it. We can do it. And some balls can drop. Some balls simply, or some plates can stop spinning. Some of them just can't matter. There may be some things that uh, will have to go by the boards. Uh, Pat has had all of our married life uh, this little plaque on the wall uh, in our home that says, in effect, that the dust and the cobwebs can wait. I've got babies to tend and sing to. Now, she's never let a dust or a cobweb wait, I think, in her whole life. But I like the philosophy. I like the idea that there's some priority there. 
Uh, remember President Monson's cute story about the man who failed to get his son to the circus? And his wife said, oh, well, the circus will come again. And he said, but childhood won't. So we work at it. We work at it. And don't feel guilty. I hear in your voice a, a, a fear that God is going to condemn you. Uh, he won't because you're smart enough and good enough to ask the question. And your wife's good enough to ask it with you. And we grow. We grow. And what we didn't do very well yesterday, we do a little better tomorrow. And a month or two or ten from now, we're really pretty good at it. So be good to yourself. Be kind to yourself. And be kind to each other. And spouses and children, all of us, we do have all of this mortal opportunity to grow together. We, we, we are the church. We are, we, it is our doctrine to talk about creating worlds and having eternal families, eternal children. Well, before we leap to that, what we need to remember is that God's given us a chance to practice with just a few people. Before we take on all the planetary stuff, what he's saying is, how are you doing with three or four or five of you? And so see your, in a loving, forgiving, pleasant way, see your family as practice for godhood and for eternity and for how spouses are patient with each other how children are patient with parents, and certainly how parents are patient with children. And uh, see these as constructive and hopeful lessons and moments, not, not anything to condemn yourself for or be overly uh, destructive about, because then, then we're immobilized, then we're incapacitated, and, and the worst extension of that is a divorce or a broken home. That's clearly going the wrong direction. We'll take it the other direction where we learn and develop and and are happier and better, and, uh, and, and, and we have more hope. We have, a, we have a more hopeful day ahead. Our faith and our charity will take us there. Pat, any thought about that? I, I, this is just something couples have to work on eternally. We still have to take time to say, how are we doing? Are we giving yeah. each other enough time? And, uh, and I, I think that'll last until the day we die. It's just one of those things Absolutely. that you work on continually. He's too busy now even to put an egg timer on. <laughs> and so he leaves me a little note in the morning. And I, I check every morning for that note and, and cherish it all day long. So from the beginning of the day, I know he, yeah. he loves me and he cares and he's just too busy to call him. And um, sometimes when he's too busy to leave a note, I read an old note that he's left. So. <laughs> That's and, the way it is. And when I don't call her, she calls me. So. That's right. <laughs> You're very Great, normal. thank you. Because we, we, we do learn. We do, we do grow together. And, uh, and the patience and the understanding uh, and her seeing your busyness as well as your seeing her need Th that's what this is all about. That, that's what we're kind of getting outside ourselves. We're, we're kind of working towards seeing what is it the other person's wrestling with, and that's the divinity of this. That's this charitable component. That's the atonement uh, component. But I would say, uh, because you've raised it as a husband and wife issue, uh, I, I would be emphatic here. I would be very emphatic in saying that's that second only, second only to our loyalty to God himself, to, to the living son of the living God, our greatest loyalty is to our spouse and none other. And, and sometimes even in our love, even in our protectiveness, we're going to rush to do the children thing. We're going to help the kids. Well, heaven only knows. Well, there are a lot of things we have to do to help the kids and a lot of sacrifice we make to do that and at vulnerable, tender, growing years of their life. That's a very high priority. But, but in the eternal scheme of things, you are only going to be, I think, as good with those children as you are with each other. It is not a coincidence that President McKay has gone down in history as having said, the greatest thing a man can do for his children is love their mother. And in this day and age, all these things that draw us apart, all these things in the workplace and life and television and internet and on and on and on and on. Uh, just, uh, we, if anything, we underestimate, I think we understate the covenantal obligation to a spouse. 
You just need to be careful not to do that. No, that's not a guilt trip. That's just an invitation to say, just a good way to remember which plates to spin first. <laughs>